When adventure calls you with an unknown number, will you pick up the call? Today, we take you on our musical journey through Armenia, made for travelers, music lovers, and producers. Marevses, Voses, Yes, Edin M. John Apart Hortoch, Yerajish Tarkan Producer, Yev, I Sword, Ses, Katanem Hayastan, Kali Audio Ghi, Het Miasim, Hayastan Numenk Sain Nagrel, U Nekara Hanel, Eng Tasnamek, Yerk U Tesacholovak, Tarbesh, Kirashali, Vairerum, Eis, Vaverara Gran, Filma, Stechsfel E, Hrashali, Mart Kans, Geretik, Penapat Gerneri, Jura Hatduk, Stetschia Gutnutuneri, Rashali Jera Shistuzian, Arbesti, Jev Hayastani, Harust Patmagan, Mashaguiti, Schnorhiv, Gut Tabatsa Haitek, Tarantavor, Jera Zistneri, Jev Norararagan, Vairer, Porong Hochun, En Apagan, Debi Lave, Inchbes, Najev, Zaina German Hohutnes, Schnorhagal, Hem, Polor, Nranz, Skazi, Ins, Inchbes, Tane, Jev, Polor, Nranz, U, Handi, Bezi, Eis, Jera, Zistakan, Jona, Palor, Tuzian, Jera, Zistakan, Jona, Palor, Tuzian, En, Hartzku, Jana, Ni, Zelowitz, Neri, Jev, Eis, Jona, Palor, Tuzian, Jana, Lu, Tarznevu, Homat, Gnazink. After hearing Armenian music for the first time, my subconscious mind knew that there are deep and strong cultural and historical roots of humankind in this country. I didn't know what's waiting for me, but it felt right to go. A sense of adventure arised. I said already in 2015, when we came for the first time to Armenia to attend the 100th Memorial Day of the genocide, to share our respect and our tears, that we will come back and do something special. So this time I took a flight, I packed 16 microphones, a couple of XLR cables, interfaces and my open mind for whatever will happen. We didn't plan much and we didn't have many confirmations from bands. And I love it! We could leave space for creativity and magic to happen. Let's get ready for the first session guys. Here's my mic locker, check this out. Woo. Our first recording was with Haik Karoy. I drove to him to the Music Composers Union in Yerevan, where he has a small but neat studio. Haik is a loving soul and such an incredible musician. He's working for 10 years every single day on it. He's a multi-instrumentalist and started with traditional music, playing on weddings and on funerals, where he learned about the emotion of music, especially when there was a funeral in the morning and the wedding in the evening. Scarves are amazing. Man. One day I want to feel up. So. Man. Four tweeters here. I want to know for what they used it. Incredible. <laughs> and the piano. Like, is that mafia really difficult playing? Like. We had awesome vibes, turned off the light and started to work together on his music. He showed me his latest electronic tracks and asked for feedback. And they were incredible.
So during the night, we had the idea to drive into nature's place and record a full DJ live set with Hai Karoi. Check this out. We drove one hour away from Yerevan and wanted to capture the sunset, the golden hour, to have the best video. But we forgot the mic stand and had to find a solution. Luckily, we found the perfect stick. I want to say thank you to Helena, who came to help us with the video production during this day. She started the upcycling fashion label Vintabilia, which have incredible clothes that are made of unused materials. And instead of throwing them away and cause more pollution on this planet, they are making awesome fashion. Please check them out on Instagram, as well as Haikaroi, to discover more about their incredible project. We got the visit from LA. John Hovo Melikian and Charles Sprinkle, the co-founder of Kali Audio, came to visit us and join us on our journey. Both guys absolutely rock and they were an incredible help every day. When they arrived, we got 10 microphone stands and 10 XLR cables, but the band for this day canceled. We don't want it to waste a day without recording, especially when we have the gear now with us. Many people helped us to find new bands spontaneously, but it was really on a short notice. After a while, John checked his Instagram and got a message from the drummer from Kami Friends Band. And this was his lucky day because we offered him a free record tonight. <laughs> So we started to set up the stage, hanging out with the local engineer. Hey John, what are you filming? Filming you, man. <laughs> Putting new cables, plugging out the old ones that were running into the mixer for the live sound. Until they asked me to run the live sound through my cheap system <laughs> for the whole night. It was a club where people go for dinner, hang out and see a beautiful live show. Unfortunately, my system is not made for this and there was a lot of latency, so we had to find another solution. We unpacked all the mics again and figured out that we could just go with the USB out from the mixer into my laptop. <laughs> Lesson learned. I think this was a great way to get started 
for our recording journey, how to work together, how to coordinate the cables, the mic stands and everything. So lesson learned was incredible. This was one of the highlights in my life. I never heard music like that before, ever. And it deeply touched my soul. With the great team, we did a quick setup. We are now at the Narigazzi Art Institute, a self-funded institute that gives musicians and artists the space for music courses to hold the orchestra there. They have different bands like the Narigazzi Orchestra, Nova Folk Ensemble, they have a dance ensemble, they have actions for the physically challenged people, art classes for kids. And I think this is a truly beautiful organization. Thank you for the work that you are doing. This is very inspiring and very important. After the setup was ready, I was listening to the composition and the sound in the room, how we can make it work. Then I decided how to set up the microphones. For me personally, music is emotion in motion. And I always try to imagine how the sound moves through the room and which microphone can capture the sound in the best way. Music is the gateway to the soul. And I see it more to capture a moment and the vibe with this project. And I hope it worked for you. I hope you can feel what we experienced there and what we created there together with these amazing musicians. The third take was truly it. So we packed our stuff and went to the Erebuni castle for the video shooting. This is my life, man. This is what I love. I was crying, man. It was amazing. Che, che, che. Look better now than before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, for me, this was a big surprise. I didn't know that we would drive there. <laughs> it's like, imagine Gogo Bordello system with a down. Yeah, we checked them out. Yeah, yeah awesome. I love this kind of music. It's something that is special for the whole uh, Special Armenian reeds. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. How you count? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Zari masaż. No dostaw. Miki drzwi z They brought two big speakers and a mixing desk to play the playback. Asar im im kabel es erich ek verserel en kan chim moratsel en kan dech. There have to be one improvisation in every production we have, and this one will be the one improvisation. Voila. It's for you. Oh, thank you. I'm rolling. Yes. <laughs> so when I want to join, what I have to do? <laughs> Just ask. Legally change your name to Edo. Edo. You need to practice. Okay. Many. Lot many hours. Okay, I'm over this. <laughs> and then the next step? Next step, you need to play very much. Mm -hmm. uh, in concerts, in the You need to play very good Armenian instrument. Mm -hmm. And if we need this instrument, welcome if you so to want this. our <laughs> orchestra. If you so want this, I love this. Yes. Do you need a guitar player? No. 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 Ah. <laughs> now, a little bit history about the Erebuni Fortress. The name Yerevan derives from the name Erebuni. And the fortress was built around 750 before Christ. You find traces of the first ever written language from the Sumerians. And you have a wonderful view over Yerevan, Mount Ararat, and all the natural surroundings. Let's discover some of the traditional instruments. We had the Oud. The Oud is more known in the Western music, and it's a beautiful string instrument. We have the tar, that almost reminds like a small guitar. One of the eye catcher is for sure the kanun and the santor, an instrument with multiple strings that you Play with your fingers, like a harp, but on your lap. We had the kamache, it's like a boat a string instrument. And if you followed us on our Morocco journey, you see it reminds a little bit of the ribab. We had the traditional duduk. This is one of the most famous instruments from Armenia that people know. It's this flute that you play very soulful. I actually got one here. And here it is, handmade by the Duduk master Karn. There are other flutes like the Shvi, 
and we had the blue. I hope I say the name right. And they differ a little bit in form and the sound. Some are lower, so the flute is longer, so you can play lower notes. And some are higher, they're a little bit shorter. And like this, you get a variety of flute sounds. And then the cello and double bass that you saw, they're called bambir here. So we had the small bambir, a middle bambir, and the big bambir, and the doll. And that's mainly it. We will make another video where you can download the multitracks, learn more about the recording process and the mixing process and can mix it for your own. Komitas is the most famous Armenian composer. He was born in 1869 and passed away at the age of 66, 1935 in Paris. He was a priest, musicologist, composer, arranger, singer, choir master and a pioneer of ethnomusicology. He was interested in music from all around the world. His parents passed away in a young age. As an orphan, he got enrolled 1881 in the prestigious Georgian Seminary, which is like a Catholic music school. Due to his singing talent, where he could finally find stability in his life through music, he learned about the structure of polyphonic choirs as well as the Armenian Kass notation system, which was developed early in the 1900s. And he started writing down Armenian folk songs from the villagers around him. The villagers called him the note-taking priest. In 1895, he learned about the basics of the European music notation system in Tbilisi, in Tiflis, and later studied composition in Berlin. They say he used his Western training to build the Armenian national tradition as he was then able to write down over 3,000 Armenian folk songs. Among others, he got praised by composers like Claude Debussy and left a creative imprint on European composers up to this day. During the genocide, he got arrested and deported to one of the Ottoman Turkish prison camps. And by witnessing this cruel massacre, he suffered mental breakdowns and PTSD. In 1919, he was transferred to a hospital in Paris where he spent the rest of his life in agony. Nevertheless, his music will live and inspire people around the world forever. And I'm happy to see through this journey that this music get teached to the younger generation. Please check out the YouTube channel of the Narigazi Orchestra, where Komita's heritage is kept alive and forwarded to the next generation. Yerevan is incredible. If you haven't been there yet, now it's time for you to discover this beautiful city. Yerevan is called the pink city because of the color of the stones. In general, Armenia is the first country that accepted Christianity for their whole nation and they are very proud of it. Some of the most famous artists now that are from Armenia are of course System of a Down and Cher. People take a lot of care and value about their family and family members. And we had, for example, a wonderful time at John's family on the first day when they arrived. This is like the flea market in Yerevan called Vernissage. You can find everything here, from historical goods to modern handmade crafts. Yerevan is a very modern city and you have a lot of modern cafes, modern restaurants. The traditional food is incredible, even for me, I don't eat meat, I don't eat fish. There are so many healthy options. And if you want to have a drink or two, Armenia is the best country, especially known for their wine. The tradition goes thousands and thousands of years back. They are experts in wine. And of course, you have many magnificent monasteries and the amazing nature around you. I know this is just a small part that we can show in this documentary. So we invite you to travel to this country and discover it for yourself. Make your own experience, your own impressions, and your own adventure.
Freddy. Tumo Center provides free education for 10,000 kids worldwide. After school, kids can come over and learn about robotics, coding, programming, DAWs. They have a musical band there that we recorded, videography and many more things. They take old buildings that are unused, renovate them, bring thousands of MacBooks down there, so the kids can learn coding, build a creative space for these children that can come after school and learn for free there. The offices above will be rented to startups, which get also support how to run a company. Like this, they are building a flow, and if the kids are really good in coding, they directly get a job. There are now four Tumo Center alone in Armenia, this is where it started. One in Paris, one in Ukraine that is unfortunately bombed, one in Berlin, and now they're building one in Tirana, that is very close to my heart, the city, in the pyramid from the old dictator Enver Hoxha. I think this is one of the most beautiful institutions and actions I heard about in a long time. Very exciting. I love this place. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have, John, I'm going to have a boatload of stuff to, to cover. And so, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Don, it's way. You got the. He <laughs> got so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Karma, yeah. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Yeah, nothing. Okay. <laughs> I, dro I dropped it, and he got happy. We met Arik Bambir, a loving soul, and such a creative musician. One of the most known rock musicians in Armenia. He's playing the flute. And I invite you to check out his music with the band The Bambir and Timbata Orchestra that he's having now. His energy, presence and creativity truly inspired me. Ari came by and showed us both compositions. He was together with another camera team that made a documentary about his life. So I'm really proud to be part of this one. Ten second pause. Uh -huh. The first composition reminded me more of Frank Zappa, a little bit Dadaistic and it was really interesting. The best thing was, when I saw the faces of the kids, they had so much fun doing this. And this is all about, no? It's an uh, open D. Open D. Yeah. That's good. Eh? Yeah. You have guitar for a long time. <sighs> mm. Rolling Stones tuning, eh? It's Turkish tunes. I think it's like Saz. Texas. Like Texas. Like mm -hmm. It's a uh, Eastern instrument. Yeah, I know this one. Armenian Persian. I never saw a guitar like this. Yeah, it is it's a very really limited. Martin. Martin. Charles, my friend. Can you plug it into the wire second right? Yes, that is number two. Edo, yeah? he says he can tell us approximately where everyone's yeah. sitting, so we can maybe yeah. further stage the correct mics. Because the cello will be here. Cello is it? Usually here. But, uh, they, they sit here in this direction? Oh, I'm here sitting like this. Ah, in this direction? Yes. Yeah. This is our first the symbol of Tambata. <laughs> <laughs> Soviet style 
Military drum. Nice. nice. So here's the box around. John, yeah. how are you going to make that drum? Yeah, there's no hole, eh? Well, you just let's listen. Yeah, the real quick. Yeah, because it's very good. Yeah, like this, we got it. I see if I should have to do my for No, no. Going in there to channel, correct? Yes, exactly. And then they can double check their Apple mix. They can check. Can I hear also drums? Yes, of course. Right. Nice kick. Yeah, man, the kick is amazing. And I just put one tiny equal, okay, one big equalizer. Without equalizer, it's like this. And with, you got everything. Yes, it sounds very soft and clean. Thanks so much, man. Four microphones. Master. <laughs> Thank you. Setting up the room together was again so much fun and the kids are so talented. Check out the drummer, how good he is. Check out the bass player. The vocalist, the backup choir, the songs. It's a synergy of creativity, playfulness and doing something together. And I was really proud that we could capture a moment like this. The second one is a great rock track that is truly catchy. Eddie, 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 Eddie Van. I could say so much more, but I just want to say thank you for this wonderful time. This was incredible. Come with us to one of many magnificent monasteries, Norava.
close to it is a cave with the oldest traces of a winery in the world, around 6,000 years old. We had an incredible adventure and I want to thank the composer and producer Arsen for recommending us this place and bringing the talented musicians Shirak and David. We drove in the morning and wanted to record one song outside, a composition by Komitas, performed by Shirak, who plays the duduk, and David, who plays the tar. This is huge, man. Yeah. Thank you, Ali. That's very respectful. Arsen told me that the stone walls act as a natural compressor and the sound was truly amazing. Stone is a natural compressor. So we keep this as our secret compressor. Yeah. <laughs> the band arrived and we found the best place for recording outside with a lovely view. One over the lake. Seven of Yeah, I dare be, man. One of my favorite places. It's, okay, it's always too crowded in Seven Oh, yeah? When I was there, it was it's empty. There was nobody. Hi. Come on, Oh, there? Okay. This heist is a little So. Also, my name is. It's a. Welcome everybody. So we're here in Noravank. It's a very old beautiful monastery and we make a live shot here with the Armenian folk ensemble together with the duduk and the tar traditional instruments and we just use two microphones just go super live and um, Andarik will help us to capture this performance in a beautiful way this is my gig bag it costs 20 bucks and it's not so windy so I go for condenser microphones the Lewitt 540 is amazing for the tar and what else we have? <coughs> and another 540. Surprise, we take both of them. It's a minimum setup, we don't even have electricity here. And we have an interface that is powered by the laptop. Just with two inputs. And later we make some sound experiments inside the monastery. I'm very excited for this. It's like a recording snack, it's just two microphones. Not like 16 like yesterday and the day before. I like also this chilled out productions. They're all chilled out, no? We had a good time, no? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this amazing team is helping me to carry the stuff, to set up the stands, to make my life way easier and I really love it. Thank you so much, John. Of course. It's the Kali team. We're here together with them. They, uh, this is the brain, he organized everything. Arsen, Mr. Arsen's idea for Noravank. This was Arsen's idea? This was Arsen's idea for Noravank. Arsen, the local music producer, amazing composer. <laughs> <laughs> you can chill! This is a poor episode. Wow, no wind at all, so this is good. Yeah. We don't need. This we do need. All right. That's it, we can go home. <laughs> it's the best day ever to record. Oh, I will be with the laptop down there. 
After recording three takes, we just wanted to go down and set up in the monastery. But the priest started with his ceremony and wasn't really pleased that we wanted to record in this old holy place. After 20 minutes of discussion, he kindly granted us access and liked it so much that we were allowed to record even two songs. At the end, he gave us a personal prayer for our family and friends. He is not your, he's not the Catholic Pope. In 97 and in Paris, and in 2000 he came to uh, Armenia. <laughs> he says, uh, me and, uh, the Pope was saying, me and this gentleman were, uh, are, are similar in one way, that we both don't like communists. For Easter. <laughs> for Easter, we're gonna say a prayer for our families, our friends. I don't know what you want to do, so for me, Papa, me, we saw that Jesus Christ was a smart man, but yeah, Papa, me, we can. I don't think we can just go over to school. Do not send any questions. I will give you the answer to all your questions. But what I have to do is to go to the school. Are you ready? You want to go to the school? Are you ready? 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 Are Ort nealinek, ishnodat se po punjetaki, hvala učio. 
A happy end. Hey John. Hey man. How's it going? Good. How are you? Amazing. So you came to this majestic place in Armenia, Noravank. Noravank. Yeah. Constructed in 1100 AD. How do you feel just being here? It's, it's very relaxing, man. Yeah. Yeah, I feel very centered actually. Yeah. Yeah. And when uh, when the guys were playing the instruments, the tar and the duduk, mm -hmm. uh, up at on the top of the hill, that was composed in the 1100s as well. Wow. Um, so how how does that make you feel? The spiritual song in the spiritual place, uh, in the mountains of Armenia. Man, that's why why I love this project so much because the music brings us to those places mm -hmm. to really experience them, yeah. and. It's exactly what you said, like it's from the 11th century. We are in this place, it was built at the same time. I was just drifting away, we will cut in the video, like um, Andranik was filming yeah. me, how I just floated away. Yeah. It was beautiful, man. Yeah. yeah. There are no words that can des describe it, like I'm happy we captured it, that we can show it to the people, but right. yeah, I, I wish people will experience this to come here Wonderful. and see this place. And how do you feel when we uh, went inside the monastery and recorded um, a composition by Komitas. He was a monk uh, composer uh, in the time of uh, you know, the 1900s, early 1900s. Wow. It, it, it just happened now, so mm -hmm. I, I didn't sorted it out in my head yeah. right, where I can put it. Yeah. But maybe I don't have to put it anywhere because it was just beautiful. It was a... Uh, you experience something like this once in a lifetime, mm -hmm. and um, at first I thought it, it won't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But the guy was so nice and let us in, and we yeah. recorded two tracks there. We got and the then blessing. He said a prayer for us. Yeah, we got the prayer. <laughs> yeah. We got the blessing all together. Yeah. And he told me the story about how he uh, met the Pope from Poland. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, this is yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, man. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you for bringing us here. <laughs> Thank you Appreciate for organizing it. this, man, yeah, and to do this of together. Of yeah? course, more than happy to. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for joining our project. Those musicians are so talented, so kind, and it was an amazing experience. Thank you, everyone involved, to make this possible. We went to Arsen Bayram's studio to record with Armenian pop artist Artem Walter and Mehu. The studio is truly amazing for recording. Not only from the vibe, but also from the sound and the gear that he have there. Arsen's studio is absolutely top. Yeah, this one was great. This one was great. It's, it's really between yeah. that one we marked and this yeah. one. There was just one thing, but I, I can fix it. Well, what did like, you notice? Um, yeah, in just, the canon. Just, yeah, yeah, in the canon. So, so let's let's now record a canon just by itself, solo. Uh -huh. So we, you will have it. And after that, if something is missing, definitely I'm going to re-record it and send you. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Hey, what's up, everybody? Adi here for Produce Like a Pro. And today we are in... Basamyan music in the studio in Yerevan together with uh, artist Mero playing the kanun and the awesome uh, Artem Walter wonderful voice and we have a small setup today I just want to show you what we did today um, which mics we used because these are instruments that I usually don't record that I don't have access to so I'm just sharing the syncing process so let's have a look here at the kanun and for the canon, I just put a condenser over the sound hole. They have the sound is coming from this side. And um, with this, I just captured the overall vibe. And for a little bit more low end, I used a small pencil condenser, just blending them in and got the overall nice sound. But the secret ingredients for a nice sound is always an incredible player. 
the rest just flows from below. So um, yeah, thank you. And then for Artem, wonderful voice, vocalist. For yeah, how long are you singing you. already? Like 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. It's incredible. You guys will hear it. You will be able to download the multi tracks and mix this for your own. And um, here we just used the another condenser, the Lewitt ACT 540. And yeah, I love it. You love it? Yeah. Man, it's happy nice to mic. hear that. Nice mic. I love it. <laughs> Man. Thank you so much guys for this amazing session. Thank you too. And uh, yeah, looking forward to... You are always ourselves. welcome in Armenia. Schnora <laughs> Galassion. After recording a couple of takes, Charles went into his element. He started calibrating the studio monitors and we all learned a lot here. So this is Room EQ Wizard and what it's going to have is an RTA okay. with an infinite average. Uh, we're going to play pink noise mm -hmm. and we're going to use a moving microphone method um, what I'm going to draw everybody's attention to, as soon as I can, uh -huh. is that when we measure, what you're going to see is at first, when I start a measurement, the measurement is going to move around wildly. Mm -hmm. And then, as the samples average, it's going to slowly stop, right? And once it stops, that's the measurement. And we're, gonna, we're going to capture that measurement, and we're going to measure another measurement in the same space. Now, it used to be I, a long time ago, I would two rooms and I had six microphones and I take a six microphone average. Mm -hmm. um, it took a lot of time to set up, but the benefit was is if you didn't like the measurement, you just move the microphones get a little and you get a different one. But which one is correct? <laughs> <laughs> this one, you move the microphone in the in the same volume of space, you get the same measurement time after time after time. It gives you confidence that that is a consistent measurement. Now, I, I've also done the work to be able to correlate that um, against different numbers of microphones so that I know that that moving microphone average is equivalent to 32 microphones in the same space. Amazing. Yeah. Let's rock it. What does he need to do now? All right, so I got 24 dBU coming out, and he should be able to pull that up and put it into his uh, monitors. My goal is to, to make a neutral monitor that's a reference to people that are using it. Yet, as much as I work at that, I can't really do anything with the with the space that these speakers are going into and below about 700 hertz or around there depending on the room um, there's going to be problems there 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 always is um, and so getting you know getting the room set up correctly getting the right amount of absorption in the room uh, getting the loudspeakers in the right place and then uh, calibrating the system is kind of something I'm focusing on talking about a lot because it's very very important as much as my efforts in designing monitors are as much as those efforts are worth getting people to calibrate their systems and get their systems set up correctly is equally important let's go now let's go to the cell now to the cell now let's go to the cell now let's go to the cell now that talk about the science behind the, the measurements that I'm doing and, and also how I'm going to find it and, and watch it. Yeah, it's, it's all over there. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm ready to measure. We can move the chair and... Uh, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically take in this space, the listener's going to be centered vertically here on the air height. We're going to take the moving mic measurements and... Move your arm a little bit, keep it tight, create a volume. It should be centered on the desk, and then just create a volume. There you have it. Yeah, same measurement. Yeah. So we can do 100 times, and it's going to be the same measurement. Mm -hmm. This is the way, yeah, look, it's accurate. It's your room. It's accurate, it's accurate. If it's accurate, yeah. it's accurate. It's always going to give you the same answer. Now, now, this will be something. Now we can com compare 
against the two. You were asking why one went up and one went down. Now, if you take, if you take the left average and you take the right average and you average those two together, those should match this curve, minus 3 dB. This is just scratching the surface, but it was so inspiring to learn from his expertise and passion about studio monitors, sound, and calibration. Between all the excitement, it was good to have a chilled out production. John and Charles went for dinner to Artem, while I went to the live concert at the Narigazzi Art Institute. I checked out the last band we're gonna record tomorrow, the Nova Folk Ensemble, and many other young artists that presented their beautiful talent and fantastic Armenian compositions. But at first, Narek, the director of the Narigazzi Art Institute, organized us a live interview in the morning live show at Kentron TV. Narigazzi Art Institute, him na dij Narek harutunya ne tagavarum mehure variara vot. Kali audio studio ina haga yefama him na dij John Melikian. Yev irashta kam producer Adrian Parzent. So I started playing music when like 20 years ago. And, and in 2017 I went more into producing. And between commercial jobs that I have with people all around the world, I always want to give something back and Ashkhari amen zaerun vor ashkhatum e inka misht uzum e mi ban het ta aveli biznesi ashkharum commerce ashkharum Tum yev inch kartsik huni haykakan yerajshtutsyan nekatvom Is this the first time you've been working with Armenian musicians and Armenian music and what's your opinion of Armenian music oh, and Armenian musicians I'm blown, blown away mm -hmm. the compositions of Komitas and mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I've been to the Narigatsi Institute mm -hmm. About the Nova Ensemble, your impressions you, you want to talk? Yeah. It was wonderful, such a soundscape and so talented young musician. I was blown away, I was sitting there and <laughs> what, what's going on now? This is fantastic music. Um, so she's asking after the recording mm -hmm. and the filming, what is going to be the result? What should we expect? Ah, there will be one documentary for mm -hmm. the produce like a pro uh, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There will be music videos and there will be mixing tutorials so people can learn how to mix uh, my mixing approach, they can download the multitracks and mix it for their own. This is a good process So you, you stated Komitas and his compositions are pretty complicated. So mm -hmm. do you find working in that kind of composition, symphony, orchestra in Armenia easier or more complicated? Does it come naturally or do you have to put more work into it? Um, music is an emotion. So when I'm mixing, I'm capturing the emotions Emotia, and just yeah, go into it. Mm -hmm. so, so music is the universal language. Mm -hmm. And the emotion is the emotion. 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 And and you're processing gomic dust the way it, it, sh it, it should be. And when you do your travels and you represent gomic dust abroad, you represent it as 
part of the Armenian natures, uh, Armenian culture's fundamental, you know, roots, uh, as opposed to other people who try to, you know, uh, tap into plagiarism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you one more time for this kind words and the invitation to your program. We had a wonderful time there. Right after that, we drove back to the Narigazi Art Institute and started to set up for the final record day. We recorded two songs with the Nova Folk Ensemble. And in the background, you will see an art exhibition organized by the Polish Embassy to celebrate 30 years of the Polish and Armenian friendship. I like when they go and come and make like <laughs> There are many factors to consider sound-wise. And even now, when I'm tired, I need to focus to not mess up the sound. Because there is no way to re-record or to do any fixes. For some people, it's the extreme sports to get the kick. For me, it's exactly this kind of live recording situations. And it's a lot of fun. It's almost like a meditative state that helps me to appreciate and recognize the present moment as it is. Sound. Sound is interesting. You can't touch it. You can't taste it. You can't smell it, but it has such an immense impact on you. It does something to you. And hearing frequencies, hearing face issues and other strange things is something I couldn't even imagine years ago that it's possible. But our ears are like a muscle and can learn. So if you want to go on your own musical journey, you can do it. You can learn it with daily practice and ear training. Go out and record bands for free who need it and get your hands on experience. The only thing that can happen is that you get better doing what you love. Institute and it was incredible. I want to show you which microphones we used, a um, little bit how I mic'd it. So number one, we were in phase with so many instruments, so it sounds naturally good. And for the two drums that were here, we used again our kick mic, the Rex 340, and we had seven looks and flutes. So we used the SM57. I split them in groups of two and one extra here for this one. Plus a little bit percussion, and um, we have SM57, SM57, NTP440, what is like SM57, and another SM57. So we got always groups of two. For the wood, I, we, we had enough space to mic them individually. We had three woods, so we put three mics. The SM58. MD250 and another MD250, what is usually a vocal microphone, but it worked perfectly with it. Sounds beautiful. 
Den får du. Det säger någon av oss. Han drar en kvart sen en gång. Santor. Okej. För det Santor och just SCT540. Och du ser att alla mikrofoner går i samma riktning. Jag har inga mikrofoner, utan de ut. Men ofta de mikrofoner kanslar ut de drömmen från bak. Så det är inga ljud som kommer och de får en bra image av Santor. And then we grouped the canon. Here were the second canon. I put the ACT540 in the middle to get the sound of both. And then, 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 we had the first canon. There were, were three of them. I went a little bit experimental. I put this one in figure eight. It means from here I take the sound, from here I cancel it. So here we get the sound of both of them. And here again, we got the sound of both of them with the stereo pair in 120 degrees, something like this. Mm, sounds beautiful. And the last one, another MTP 440 for the top. That's it. Good musicians make a good sound. This is all you need. The rest works from below. Cello. <laughs> Thanks, man. So the cello got experimental because I didn't have another mic stand. And for the cello I love to hang this one. Maybe you saw this also at the Narigazzi Orchestra. I used the same technique. I just hang it there. Cello players would hate me. Uh, but it works awesomely fine. Because we have a nice low end here, so the cello has a nice representation. And with this one I just put a little bit more extra presence. Thanks for watching guys. Adi here from Produce 4, Produce Like a Pro. And uh, yeah, have fun mixing this track. What a beautiful final recording with these incredible artists. I want to thank you one more time for providing the space that these young artists can play together, learn how it is to play together, these complex and beautiful compositions. How did you like our journey and the documentary? Did you learn something? Do you have any questions? Please leave them down there in the comment section and I will get back to you. I have a feeling that this was just part one of a long friendship and new journeys to Armenia. There are so many talented bands that we love to work with and bring them to a wider audience. I truly believe that through music we can understand the roots and history of a culture. Music is my way to bring peace and love to this planet and music is a universal language that connects people all around the world without even understanding a word. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone who was involved to make this project happen. I slept three hours per night, but I didn't feel tired. I felt energized, it was exciting, I learned a lot. I wish to everybody in Armenia, to everybody in the world, only the best, every single day. Thank you so much, have a wonderful time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. Please check out the artists and the institutions Vintabilia, Tumo Center, Narigazzi Art Institute and support them. Support those innovative ideas that we need in this world. People who support from their heart, helping children, helping this planet, helping the environment, because this is what we need. Last big thank you goes to the Produce Like a Pro team, to Luit, to Kali Audio, 
John, Charles, Warren, everyone, you rock. <laughs> and here are my last thoughts. I wish that the people from Armenia will be able to travel the same way like I do to experience the world with, I, I'm aware of my privilege that I have a German ID and I can travel here and there and discover the countries. And I hope that the political situation will change and make it easier for other people to visit those countries. I believe when I can go there, they should also come to me and we can show the same hospitality for the wonderful people. Um, nevertheless, until now, I encourage you to invite those bands to your local town, to your world music festival, in general to your festival, to discover this music and make a dialogue with the power of music. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Peace.